All right, hello everyone. I'm John in Rips, aka Steven, and I'm going to be playing a Long War 1.0 Iron Man Impossible campaign with you all. I'm going to be endeavoring to just ludicrously, ridiculously over-explain one aspect of the game per day, and today that's going to be like the starting options. Uh, which country you can start in, what the different second wave options do, and why I like the ones that I like, and things like that. So, hopefully you'll enjoy me talking a very large amount about pretty insignificant things. I'm playing on Iron Man Impossible. It's just the hardest, hardest you can make the game. I've heard a lot of people expressing concern about playing Iron Man campaigns because they're concerned with losing games to bugginess. Um, it's not too difficult to make a backup of your Iron Man save, like once a month or something like that, to avoid that. And I actually really like playing with Iron Man because a lot of the bugs in this game are just tactical, tactical game bugs which crash your turn. And if you're not playing with Iron Man on, you may have to go back to the beginning of the mission or whenever you manually saved with Iron Man. It, pretty regularly puts you straight back at the beginning of the turn. So I think it's just a nice convenient thing to play with as well. I'm not playing with Operation Progeny or Slingshot. Um, they can be fun missions and definitely the first like 500 times that I played them they were a lot more fun than they are now. But the biggest reason that I don't have these turned on is that I consider them to be pretty significant buffs to XCOM. They unbalance the strategic game quite significantly letting you get more specialists and resources earlier in the game because of the extra missions, as well as experience on your soldiers. So I prefer to play with them off, but certainly you can play with them. And certainly if you haven't beaten the game, or at least haven't beaten the game multiple times, the missions can be quite challenging and difficult to play. But it's just frustrating to play a scripted mission over and over again. You learn one strategy for it and then execute it every single time and then it unbalances the strategic game so i don't want to play with those on all right let's talk about second wave options so first off i play with hidden potential liberators and perfect information perfect information is just a cosmetic thing and liberators is not very significant to the campaign it requires you to kill all of the alien bases before you can win the game and its only real purpose is to stop me from being able to skip all of the late game missions. So without Liberators, I can get to a point where I have enough resources to just, you know, research the late game tech, skip all the missions, and go on the temple ship. And I don't want late game to be like that. Hidden Potential is the only one that mixes the game up a little bit. And I consider Hidden Potential to be a buff for XCOM. The more extreme that your soldiers are, like the higher their aim can be, the better your A-team can be. And a lot of this game is about crafting a very good A-team. Once your A-team is working well, you're able to clear the really difficult missions, of which there are only like three per month typically. You're going to be much stronger on base defenses, and you're able to go on the really important story missions, mostly the base assaults, with your incredible A-team. So Hidden Potential is probably a bit of a buff to XCOM, but I really enjoy playing with the variety in the soldier level ups, and I think it makes selecting soldiers to go on missions a little bit more interesting and intricate. Um, why aren't I saving? Why aren't I playing with other second wave options? Um, a lot of the second wave options are just buffs to XCOM, and I'm not interested in those, because I'm trying to make the game as hard as I can. So, as hard as I can within reason, I should say. So, stuff like the Friendly Skies just gives you bonus aim in the air game. And that's cool, but I'm not interested in it to begin with. The main reason, though, that I don't have a bunch of second wave options turned on is that I think the game is extremely well balanced uh, in 1.0. Some people who are very good at designing games spent a very long time balancing this game. And a lot of these second wave options just throw the balance out entirely. Um, Commander's Choice, an option which I think the majority of people actually play with, just lets you play with whatever classes you want. You 
like no longer even need to make half of the classes if you don't want to and you can grab whatever you want for whatever mission so that makes the game a lot easier but it also means that your squad composition becomes a very specific thing because you never have to choose to take a soldier who ended up as like a weird medic with high-ish aim for some reason on a mission because you never get that soldier to begin with um something like red fog this reduces the aim and will and mobility just aim and mobility <laughs> of units when wounded or damaged which applies to aliens as well so this like makes shivs and things with lots of armor extremely strong early in the game it makes it so that your like grenades are cc'ing enemies it changes the game pretty drastically and the way it does so throws the game balance off in my opinion um even something like diminishing returns which increases the cost of satellites with everyone that is built sure that makes the game a lot harder but one of the really interesting things in this game is trying to decide how many satellites you want to buy each month and when your next satellite costs you a thousand dollars that decision is completely gone so i feel like a lot of these second wave options make the game more difficult by taking options away from you and i want those options available because i think that the enjoyment of the game for me at least comes from deciding which of the options to pursue Okay. The crux of this cinematic is Sneakers guy. Well, and Smiley Alien Canister. Those are the two characters that we have to be concerned with here. We're about to meet Smiley Alien Canister. <laughs> it's so happy. <laughs> it's a happy little alien container. <laughs> He's so happy to see you. Oh. Oh, right. That's the plot twist, you know? And this is Sneakers Guy. It's all about saving Sneakers Guy. He was presumably already dead, but what are we gonna do? An extraterrestrial incursion. This Council of Nations has convened to approve the activation of the XCOM project. You have been chosen to lead this initiative to oversee yeah. our first and last line of defense. Goodbye, Miss Kitlan. Your efforts will have considerable influence on this planet's future. We urge you to keep that in mind as you proceed. Surfaticus, I didn't actually decide what country I'm picking. Which is awkward. <laughs> Alright, select base location. This is something that tons and tons of people wonder about because it's the first big decision that you make in any campaign. And for me at least, one of the things that's really uncomfortable is going into an extremely complicated strategy game not knowing anything about any of the things involved. Like the first time I played Long War, I wasn't even sure what Will did. I knew what it did in the base game, but does it do the same thing in Long War? I don't even know. And suddenly you have to choose between 42 different options, all of which do different things. It's a little bit overwhelming. Um, Long War is not a game designed for the casual gamer. So I want to... This is actually inspired by a Reddit post by Computer Addict. 
in a Reddit thread called Long War Beta 15 starting bonuses, what's your tier list? Beta 15 was the last beta before 1.0, so everything's pretty much the same. I think all the starting bonuses are exactly the same. Um, and he had very similar ideas to what I do, but he wrote them down, whereas I haven't ever bothered to write mine down. So just copying off him immediately. I think the, the best start in the game is United States Special Warfare School. Officer training school projects costing 90% less saves you somewhere in the vicinity of $1,720, I think, over the first probably six months of the campaign, which is a very significant amount of money at that point in the campaign. And it starts kicking in straight away in late March and early April, which is awesome for getting your other stuff out. That's definitely not the only thing that matters here, and the starting bonuses are quite misleading in the way they display information because it seems like special warfare school is the only really important thing here right but actually what's really important is that we started in united states the united states is a 160 sixty dollar funding nation and it's on the best continent and that continent only has three countries so you only have to get mexico and canada which requires one more satellite uplink so theoretically you can have this continent bonus which is the best continent bonus in the game by the end of march and that's just amazing for making your air game work if you're going to try for laser cannons which is probably the best play in long war getting that 25 percent discount on buying them is very important because they're very expensive and even if you're not going for laser cannons without laser cannons you'll need more interceptors and those are going to cost more maintenance and more to purchase and hey North America cheapens that. So this is the best start in the game, I think, by a decent distance. And the other North American starts, even like United States on our own with no unique bonus, this is a very strong start just because of how strong the continent bonus is. Another very strong start, which I've actually never played a campaign off, is for the sake of glory in Egypt. Egypt's another three country continent and it has a decent if not as good continent bonus which again you can get by the end of March with a bit of luck or by April failing that. And Egypt gives you the advanced repair foundry project which gives faster repair time for aircraft, mechanized units, and damaged soldier gear and the one we care about there is aircraft and this is good for very similar reasons to why the North American continent bonus is good. North American Continent Bonus cheapens your interceptors and for the sake of glory lets you have fewer interceptors because they repair faster. Interceptors are the largest investment in the early game and early mid game by a considerable margin and both of these bonuses are cheapening them. So they're early game bonuses. This is a bonus where Personally, the strategic gamer that I am, I would discount this bonus pretty significantly because you can just research advanced repair eventually, and then this bonus doesn't do anything for you anymore, and I want a bonus that lasts forever, right? And same with the United States bonus, actually, because once you've completed all these projects, this doesn't do anything for me at all. But, um, yeah, the early game is very, very important, and the fact that you're saving so much money in the early game makes these extremely strong want to talk about some uh, like tier 1.5 starts that computer addict really likes and that i think are pretty good too plus one mobility for all soldiers in nigeria it's pretty solid it's getting that same african continent bonus uh cadre in canada giving you four corporals in the barracks one of each super class this is very strong um This might even be S tier, honestly. Canada is not as good a place to start as the US because it's harder to intercept UFOs over Canada than it is to intercept UFOs over the US. And in the first month, something like half of your missions required you to shoot down a small scout with avalanche missiles, which is a very high variance equation. Um, and it really sucks to fail to do that. And having your interceptors stationed near your satellite helps a lot because it's easier to get more interceptors in contact with the UFO. Um, 
the North American interceptors are stationed here and the satellite for the U.S. is stationed like here. So that's one of the reasons why the U.S. is so good. But Canada is still pretty good and four corporals in the barracks is extremely strong for your tactical game. Um, so I'd recommend this, especially if you're having trouble with the tactical game. Uh, Computer Addict likes survival training in South Africa, plus one hit point. Probably a bigger deal on Impossible than other difficulties. On Impossible, the aliens deal a bit more damage and your soldiers can definitely be getting one shot early in the game. I typically will be bringing ceramic platings on a lot of my soldiers in March and April to try to get them to a hit point level where they're safe to not die in one shot, at least if they don't get crit. But definitely one hit point on the harder difficulties is really nice at the beginning of the game. And then out of Mexico, Wealthy Benefactor giving 500 bonus cash. This is sort of a litmus test starting bonus. A lot of the starting bonuses do stuff which you could just buy with Wealthy Benefactor. Like some of the starting bonuses gives you extra soldiers at the start of the game and you could have just bought that many soldiers with Wealthy Benefactor, for example. So this is a pretty strong start. It's on the right continent. There's a lot you can do with 500 bonus cash. You do, of course, need to... Um, have a good plan for the strategic game laid out so that you can put that 500 bonus cash for good use. But in general, this is pretty good. Um, most of the other starts are not tier 1 or tier 1.5 just on the basis of not being on the right continent. So in uh, Europe or Asia, you need four satellites to get the continent bonus and you can only get three in the early game within reason. So those stars are heavily disadvantaged right from the start. But I want to give a, a special shout out to K Dorsey, which I have completed campaigns with. This is a very unique starting bonus. Country item requests occurring 40% faster. Actually, the way the math works on that, it gives you 66% uh, um, more item requests. And the biggest thing that that does is give you more scientists and engineers early in the game. So this is a start that can catapult your strategic game better than others. And if you're going to rush for Gauss weapons, as a lot of people like to, or rush for mechs, as I really like to, or something like that, this is the start that's going to get you to that tech fastest, most likely. Um, Again, there's the litmus test of wealthy benefactors out of Mexico. Maybe you could just use the extra money to build some labs and get there. But this is a very strong starting bonus, and it's only suffering from being on the wrong continent. Other than that, it's extremely good. And the rest of it is quite useful as well, especially Intel scans costing 40% less gives you a lot of money over the course of the campaign. Hello everybody in chat. I am going to read what you say. Isis Isis, I didn't lose my last campaign. I like declared it a win. All right, I just pressed the back button, which apparently takes me back here. But <sighs> my last YouTube campaign I played with, um, Special Warfare School of the United States. Hmm. I'm going to play out of the United States with On Our Own. Uh, I'll show you how strong the continent bonus is, but On Our Own will make the campaign a little bit more challenging, and that'll be fun. Plus, only psychotic people beat campaigns on Iron Man Impossible with On Our Own starting bonuses, so that will be cool too. Let's do this. The drop site for this operation will be in Canada. Sorry, I'm going to edit my overlay, which is showing stuff from a different campaign right now, but you get the general idea. The 
absolute madman indeed, Isis Isis. Strike one, this is central. You are free to engage all hostile contacts in the AO. Don't take any chances. Alright, so I'm done super over explaining. I'm gonna be a little bit more chill now. We have one of the more challenging spawn points in the game in my opinion. I don't think it's actually that bad for this point of the game. There are other points in the game where this is a very challenging spawn point because your cover is so unreliable, like it could blow up at any point. It's also very sparse and it's also very easy to get pincered. Pod here, pod here, suddenly you're pincered. You don't really have any cover that works against both of the pods. Um, there can be meld canisters on this map. Is that true? There might not be able to be melt canisters on this map. It was originally just an exalt map. Typically, when I'm in a situation where I might be pincered from my LZ, I try to move fairly quickly in one of the directions so that the pod that theoretically could activate over here just never gets to me because I'm already gone. So I'm going to make a more aggressive than usual for a first mission. Opening move Get in this direction. Alien life on Earth. We're witnessing something never before seen in recorded history. That was really interesting. So the spot pulled. Unfortunately, none of my overwatches went off. And very interestingly, the sectoids ran backward and didn't really take cover. Aye, aye, Commander. Unfortunately, they ran far enough that we can't see them from any of the cover positions we could fire from. I'm going to pull another pod. Alright, welcome to why this LZ sucks. <laughs> Hopefully the last pod on the map doesn't pull from over here. We're already fighting seven sectoids, though. And I can't really advance toward them, and I can't go backwards because there's no cover back here. There's no way to conceal my soldiers. In a situation like this early in the game, being able to conceal your soldiers is hugely important and it's just impossible right now. So I think the only tool we really have left is our grenades. The grenades are much more effective at doing things than our rookies are right now. And grenades are fairly short range, which means we probably want to be dashing forward. <laughs> this could get nasty very fast. Solid copy, Commander. So I have sectoids up here. I want to put a soldier here. It does a couple of things. It puts my soldier in range to throw grenades next turn. It also flanks both of these sectoids so that they have to move somewhere, which I would appreciate. But then I have to worry about dudes just walking here and flanking and killing my dude. So I'm going to put one soldier out here. So that those tiles are flanked and the aliens won't take them. Welcome to XCOM Long War, guys. That was a very risky move. Um, sometimes when you're in a terrible situation, you have to start taking risks, though. This may be the end of the campaign very, very quickly. It's got a heavy cover here. Every alien on the map is pulled, so now I can just dash wherever I want. I would quite like this drone which landed to be dead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Sekta is gonna just walk here and flank my guy, unfortunately. I'm not sure what I can even 
to about that. Like, I don't know. This is exactly why this is a challenging starting position. Let's move here. No, he's still getting flanked. I'm just fucked. Pardon my language. All of you good viewers. Let's move here. This is gonna be... A terrifying brawl at absolute best. <laughs> and... Yeah. Would be nice to hit that. We'll see what happens. That soldier's probably dead already. So drones don't shoot at past half of their range. Another thing that flanking aliens does is it freaks them out and makes them take defensive actions like suppressing you. Although I'm not sure that that's good here. It's good for aliens to suppress you when you have more soldiers than they have aliens, but it's pretty bad when uh, they have a billion guys. Okay, they're ganging up on one dude. Man, the drone decided not to flank me and then hit its shot anyway. That's sort of... Sort of amazing. Well, these sectoids are in pretty stupid places. Their weapons appear to self-destruct when the operator dies. We should look closely for any fragments that could be salvaged for our own development programs. why we don't equip our soldiers with assault carbines. Bye-bye. That was a really nice shot to hit. Gonna need a lot of luck here. Uh, high damage roll on this grenade would be a good start. Commander, you may want to instruct your men to exercise restraint when using explosives. While certainly effective at killing aliens, they also destroy the artifacts we're hoping to recover from the bodies. Just something to consider. Can I get some help? They're on the move. Down. Nice of him to miss that. Hey, a little help. Oh, wait. No, as happened? long as they are spending no, this isn't right. This isn't right. four guys to make these plays, I'm not too oh, upset no, about no, it. No, no. No chain panic is good. I have a soldier bleeding out who will be dead at any moment and cause panic checks for a bunch of my soldiers. I can choose between grenading this guy and um, shooting him. Shooting him potentially gets me a sectoid corpse that also saves my grenade, which is pretty significant given the current situation. I th think, though, 
This soldier is not going to have much better than like a 70% to kill with a shot. And also, putting her on his flank takes her so far away from the action. It's just not where I need her to be at the moment. So I'm going to make that play. Let's finish killing this guy. Only five sectoids left against five XCOM soldiers, so we're doing better now. On Overwatch. Is that all you got? Take it fire over here. Sectoids don't have a ton of bullets in their guns, so we are gonna have some sectoids reloading at some point. Fire. Especially if they keep on missing. Hey, a little help. Я пошла. I'm gonna go with my AP grenade on this soldier first. I think I have the distance to throw this. I saw it. Why is... what? That's very odd. Change his mind about whether I can throw it up here. Okay. What? No, come back! Is my soldier moving and doing. Okay. <laughs> I managed to throw a grenade. Good damage. We're not going to kill this guy by shooting him. Apparently I'm also not going to kill him with grenades. Um, high explosive grenades deal between 1 and 5. There's meld on the map. AP grenades deal between 2 and 6. So that high explosive grenade dealt 1 and then he had a point of DR. My AP grenades are only like 40% to kill. I don't honestly think that it's worth AP grenading him right now. Heading there now. I'm gonna move forward, hunker, and Overwatch to stop the sectoid from moving forward and flanking me. Oh, he had to reload anyway. It's cool. So moving the soldier forward to the heavy cover turned out extravagantly well. Did some decent things for me. Unfortunately, I've set the cover on fire. I'm rolling. Cover that I would quite like to be able to use. Hopefully we'll hit this. No longer a threat. Can't use this wall as cover because it's about to burn down though. I'm going to put a soldier here. We'll heal. He should be invisible. Aliens should not be able to see him. Another here. Um, this guy, obviously, he's still mind frayed. He has 38 aim right now. He does not have enough mobility to get anywhere particularly safe. I think I'm going to overwatch with him 
to try to pin the aliens in place, and then I can roll up the flank on this one next turn. And the other two should follow pretty quickly. This guy has two hit points, and I'm trying to work out whether I want him here. It's decent heavy cover. And I can move forward. It's like a two turn play. Potentially I could save my soldier who's bleeding out playing like that. Which would actually be pretty significant for experience on the mission. I'm gonna go for it. Visual on the goods. I feel commander. Overwatch here. Okay, that was a pretty bad turn for the sectoids. Got the goods. Man, I'm so close. I just barely don't have the movement to flank this guy. Have I explosive? I have a flashbang. I wonder if I could have counted their bullets and done better than this. So close. I'm on the move. I think the only thing left to do. A little bit risky, but saving my soldier from bleeding out gets me Roger. 120 experience, which is very significant for my roster right now. If I flank this guy, he will move and expose himself to an overwatch shot. No. Yes. <laughs> so close. Okay. So now the only people leveling up are people with at least two kills on the mission, of which I have two so far. I'm on the move. Just two. Target's still up. I don't actually have this guy controlled. Getting it done. Um. I'm out of I might need to grenade him Position if I miss all of these shots. Ammo out. Shot failed to connect. Solid copy. Yeah, I sort of have to do this, unfortunately. Catch. All right. Good work out there, Strike. We survived. Commander to the research labs. Commander to the research labs. Welcome to XCOM HQ, Commander. I'm Central Officer Bradford. My role in this project is twofold, providing tactical support for our field operations and keeping you briefed on the current situation. My efforts should allow you to focus on the bigger issues at hand. Speaking of which, we have a soldier waiting for a promotion in the barracks. I'll let you get to it. Did get three promotions. Okay, <laughs> so I don't play with Commander's Choice either, which means that 
We have one support like class soldier. Says, the support class provides that intangible edge our squads need. Probably, probably make an engineer out of the soldier. Zila Yoldosheva. The assault class serves as our front line. And this could be and an infantry or an assault. Fight, and the last one's out. And these are our two promoted soldiers that we get to play with our for the next in dealing massive amounts of damage mission. From afar. But without sufficient training, they're vulnerable in close combat situations. The recovered artifacts are being unloaded, and the research team is waiting your orders. We'll get started as soon as you give the order, Commander. Can I actually start a research project? I can start alien weaponry. I got exactly enough weapon fragments to do so. I was very close to not being able to start to one of the research projects. Commander to engineering. Alien weaponry is not what I want to start researching, but sure, I'll start it. Commander, I We've still got some room to grow up here, but if we really want to expand our facilities, we're going to have to start excavating um, the base. Unfortunately, the deeper we go, the more it's going to cost. This base looks absolutely amazing. I have so many pre-excavated tiles on the left side here, as well as adjacent steam vents in locations where I can Commander use them. To mission control. Commander to mission control. So probably what I'll do is I'll go satellite uplink block like this. Um, these tiles are going to be fission generators early game and turn into probably my sci lab and alien containment, something like that, later on in the game. Commander to mission control. Commander to mission control. Going to make her stop saying commander to mission control. And over here we can put some workshops and some labs with good adjacency bonuses with our power in here. It's a general idea. When selecting a specific jet within the hangar, you can choose to modify its current weapon loadout to best serve our needs. We want to stay on avalanche missiles with our interceptors for March. I'm not going to get too into that, I'll over explain it Every some other time. The council is going to want satellite coverage, so we should plan our deployments carefully. And panic wise, it's really interesting that the United States, our starting country, is tied for most panic right now. It will go down over the course of the month. I think it's good for us that we're very high panic in the United States, though. Russia is the other high panic country, so the aliens may put their first terror mission in Europe. Which probably wouldn't be very good. Probably want their terror missions to be going to small continents, so that the splash damage from the terror missions doesn't hurt quite as bad. Ah, uh, barracks looks like this. That's, yep, that's the barracks. We're not going to get too into this right now. I like the look of these two 72 aim soldiers, though. Three 72 aim soldiers. I think that aim is the most valuable of the stats in XCOM with how I play the game. I take a lot more shots than the aliens take. Okay, there's nothing else to do except start building stuff. That's important. Uh, we have $300 at the start of the game. I think you can argue for not doing this, but I'm going to spend all of them. I think two motion trackers are very valuable for Commander, collecting meld early. Get a satellite going capacity. and get a shove. We should build additional uplinks as soon as so the ship is going to be used for like early game bomb disposals. If we get a ton of missions all at once, the ship can go on one or two of them the ship doesn't suffer from fatigue and it's a very very strong soldier early in the game when meld is high in april and may meld canisters typically get up to like 14 13 in april and up to 17 18 19 in may the ship can go on missions and it's a quick tanky soldier that i don't mind losing too much that can help me collect the meld Contact detected. 
Okay, we have the first scout mission of the month very early. That's good because it means that the damage goes on our interceptors early and they get to start healing it off straight away. We have eyes on the bandits. It's a very bad close time, but because we're in the United States, I'm pretty confident we can get a second interceptor into touch with this. Also, we don't even need to. Central, this is Voodoo 37. We have a confirmed kill on Bogey 001. I repeat, the UFO is down. How copy over? Solid copy, Voodoo 37. Nice work. Central out. All right, people. Retask Recon Satellite Bravo and get me a visual on that crash site. She's coming into range now, sir. On screen. Magnify. Still in one piece. Commander, I recommend we get a strike team to the crash site immediately. Okay, so we have a UFO crash site to equip for, and that's where this YouTube video ends. I'm going to keep streaming. Don't know if I'll keep streaming this campaign or what, but I hope you guys enjoyed the first episode, and there will be plenty more coming. We're off to a pretty rough start for the campaign, but it's still very winnable. The long war is it's very long. All right, I'll see you guys next time.